Hello and welcome back to Prophecy of Pandora and our Iron Man challenge. I'm currently in a siege at the moment, uh, well more specifically a siege defense against the Empire itself. They decided to declare war against us and I'm not a big fan of that actually I gotta say. But it's fine because we're actually up against only 1,400 units. Yeah. Only 1,004, yeah, uh, I'm trying I'm trying very hard to put on a brave face here because I'm not a big fan of the whole insane amounts of units up against us right now, but there's not much I can do about it, obviously. I'm, I basically am forced to go in here, but I have found a really, really cool way of doing this. Basically, what we can do is we can literally stand here at this angle, and I can literally shoot people on the ladder without having any problems whatsoever in terms of retaliation. So literally no unit, unless they are looking at me directly, can actually fire at me from this angle, which is so incredibly useful. So if you are someone that has a uh, overabundance of arrows, for example, this is an absolutely fantastic way to defend Singal specifically, or at the very least this siege layout from a wide variety of different attackers. And specifically the Empire is going to be quite difficult because they do have infantry with very good shields. They do have those Empire gladiators that don't have any shield whatsoever. So they're gonna be obviously pretty easy to deal with. But for the most part, this is gonna be very, very simple for us to deal with. I'm hitting friendly troops when I fire way too high up. So I'm going to try and modify where I'm actually shooting to make sure that that doesn't happen anymore. But the cool thing about having multiple quivers as well is literally being able to just fire as much as I want. And then my quiver is going to replenish itself thanks to the defender uh, defender bonus that they, that they have in Pendor and a variety of other mods as well. And it's really fantastic to have that. It really is. So I'm just gonna leave one arrow in my quiver for the moment. Ooh. I could actually, uh, hmm, I could either wait for them to restore my arrows, or I could go over here and maybe pick up some from the ground. Oh, wow. Yeah, we've got to be a bit careful here. Uh, is this actually going to work? Yes, it is. Ah, very nice. Okay, I think I'll go for this. Why not? And uh, once again, got to be a bit careful because we really don't want to get shot and their crossbowmen are fantastic. Do bear that in mind. Empire crossbowmen will kill you very, very quickly. And uh, I mean, that's the point. They are the, the best crossbowmen in, uh, in Pendor, at the very least the uh, non-Knighthood Order units, because obviously Knighthood Order units are much better, but you know, you know what I mean. So hopefully we'll be able to survive I believe that they give me new arrows every two minutes. Is that? Yep, there we go. There we go. We got some more. We got some more. Fantastic. So, yeah, we've basically just got to keep on firing, keep on making the most out of our arrows. Every single arrow can potentially be a kill. And that is what we have to be very, very careful with. You know, we've got to make sure that every single one is helping our forces in some way because when you're outnumbered in such a dramatic way like we are right here it's just paramount that you do that so incredibly important Let's just try and take out those radiant cross plague wardens and the empire crossbowmen and everything because those guys are going to give our people a little bit of difficulty Ooh, okay, yep, yep, they're bringing some Immortals in now. Those Immortals are going to be very tough for our guys to deal with, so I'm hopeful that I will be able to help them out a little bit. Oh, dear. Problems are happening. Oh, dear. Uh, this, this might be bad. Iron Circle Centurions and everything as well. Those guys are really tough. They're very, very good at what they do. The best thing I can do, I guess, right now is just fire indiscriminately into the massive uh, units that they have just standing at the top of the ladder there. That's basically the best thing I can do right now. And uh, then pinpoint a couple of people if I see a particularly large high tier unit coming up, then uh, we'll do something about that. But as it stands, we've just got to be very accurate. Try and make sure we get a kill every single time, like I say. 
every single time we let loose one of these arrows, it should be a kill. You know, that's what we're aiming to do right here. Ooh, we're starting to lose a couple of people. That's not good. Okay, I've got one arrow left. I'm just going to leave that in my quiver and have a look and see exactly how many units we've killed. Yeah, so we've lost a whole bunch, as you can see right there. We've lost a whole bunch. We have eliminated almost 400 of the enemy's units. Bear in mind that we have, as far as I'm aware, 460 units in the garrison defending here. And that is including my units. And I have... Well, 320, I believe. So in the garrison, there's literally none. <laughs> there's literally like 80 or something like that. And uh, we really do need to win this. Uh, now, technically, what I could do is I could retreat. And then I could come back in. And we could try and force them to come through all of these areas a second time. And that would actually make things very easy for us. But I'm not entirely sure how, how that's going to work, really. Like, I, I really don't know if that's going to be better than what we have going on right here. But I think it might be. Look, we have baggage right here. I've actually replaced my arrows. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, it seems like the automatic uh, replenishment has, has now started to kick in once again. So that's really nice. Maybe I should stand here a little bit and try and kill those guys that are standing down there. Got to be careful about the enemy's shields because those things are going to block like no one's business. They have good shield skill, most of those enemies. Most of the infantry of the Empire are very sturdy and going to be kind of hard to deal with. And I've got to remember that even though I'm using a Sapphire Rune Bow, which is known for its fast firing speed, I really cannot just let loose arrows however I like. I've got to be very accurate with my choices, my targets, and everything like that. But so far, everything's actually going quite well, I'd say, maybe? Uh, I don't know. Because as I say, there's over 1,400 units that the enemy has. And I don't know how we're doing in terms of what their reinforcements are like or anything like that. So that might be slightly interesting uh how are we doing <gasps> we won i can't believe it okay we actually won that are you serious wow i i actually thought that this was going to be much much harder than it turned out to be but i gotta say i'm relieved very much relieved uh because i came into this siege thinking oh i might have to retreat you know i might get killed you know any number of things might happen but look at this, 167 renown, 44 morale. I wish that was honor. <laughs> I wish that was honor right now. Because if I if I literally gained 167 honor, I would be over the moon with that. But anyway, what did we lose? We lost a lot of Iron Knights, Maiden Cavalry to a lesser extent. And that's basically it. But our ally casualties lost literally nothing in comparison to what we lost, I guess. But I killed 163 out of the total 546 that we fought here. And now I'm not entirely sure what to do, to be honest. Because here's the thing. If they go in again, are we going to be in a position where we will be able to defend adequately enough? That's the question we got to be asking ourselves. Let's go into the tavern real quick. I might have the opportunity to recruit some people. Uh, no, no, I apparently don't. Okay, well, let's just wait here for some time, see what the enemy decides to do. Uh, I think they might go in again. Mm, I'm not, not, I'm not entirely sure. I did call for a campaign, by the way. I actually called for a campaign because I was thinking to myself, yes, I would very much like to maybe try and take. Uh, where, where was I? Where was I looking at? I was looking at Shaquilla, actually. I was wanting to try and take that from the Dashar, and then the Empire decided to declare war against us, and as a result I had to change my plans. And then I started scouting out a little bit about uh, Rela Keep, and Savador Castle, and Ethos even, and then I called for a campaign, as I say, and uh, that's when I decided to uh, defend Singal because they wanted to try and take this, which Mm, I'm, I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to 
complete the defense here. It, it is very, very tricky. I'm hoping that I'll be able to find Phineas relatively soon as well, because he is nowhere to be found. I have no idea why. I think I might give... Wait a minute. What, what, is, what is Sigismund actually using? He's using a heavy crossbow, so that basically makes no difference whatsoever for him to have a... Uh, uh, any more points in horse archery because that's just going to be absolutely wasteful. So I suppose he would probably need something else. I don't, uh, here's the thing, I don't exactly know what his personality is because his personality, if it's like martial or something like that, then it would be fine to make him a vassal and in which case I would start leveling up his leadership. But I don't exactly know what he's, what his personality type is. And I don't know whether I can, can I find that out somehow, statistics? No, that's not it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll just spec into leadership, and if one of you knows what kind of personality he has, then by all means, let me know. Because if th this is what happens when I click on his actual user entry into the log, and it literally doesn't say anything. So not entirely sure if we can really go ahead and just do it, you know, because otherwise, if he's a, you know, bad personality type or something, then we will have huge issues. I, I could just indict him then at that point, which would probably make the most sense, but uh, I didn't, I, I kind of wanted to prevent any drama like that actually happening. So we're going to continue to wait here for some time, and we'll see if the enemy decides to go in once again. We're still gaining noble recruits, really not that many, because I only have two fiefs, as I've said. And we are, getting, well, we're still losing 4,000 dinars, but that's really not a big deal. All right, so I actually got them into a situation where we are outnumbering our opponent, and hopefully we'll be able to achieve victory against two of the most powerful vassals the Empire has. Or at least I know that Agathon Legatus is very, very good at what he does. I'm not entirely sure about Sidonius. I think Sidonius actually is the leader or has control over the... Iron Centurion Knighthood Order? Mm, don't quote me on that, not entirely sure, because uh, it's been a while since I've actually been a part of the Empire faction, but I believe he does have quite a few Iron, uh, Iron Circle Centurions in his army, and that, well, they're, they're pretty harsh, you know, they're pretty harsh. But uh, yeah, the Empire did actually decide to run away from the situation at Singal, and uh, that's not very good for them, is it? No, that is not very good because they ended up losing, what, 500-something units and uh, for nothing, basically, for nothing. I mean, they did significantly weaken my army specifically, which, of course, is great for them because we were running around with some absolutely amazing troops and uh, making things very difficult for them. But, uh, well, uh, being, a I mean, how many did they kill of us? I mean, I think they took out like 30 of my own units. And while some of them were our CKO units, they can be replaced. You know, they can actually be replaced, even if they are um, quite expensive to do that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just hopeful that we'll be able to find Phineas soon, that we can, so, you know, so we can continue our training with Lethal Durin, we can continue to send him off. And then we can uh, actually buy a potion as well, because obviously buying a potion is the main reason why I'm waiting to send Lethal Durin away. And this is actually really bad. Have, have you seen these Iron Circle Centurions? They're insanely powerful. Just look at how incredible these guys actually are. Very, very powerful indeed. Look at how... Wow. They are causing utter devastation in our nation. Right? Yeah. Absolutely just absolutely crazy and uh, they're not even that difficult to kill uh, at least for me because I can I can kill them pretty easily but unfortunately my forces seem to be having some major problems with them which I gotta say is actually kind of surprising I would have thought that we would have a pretty easy time of dealing with them but apparently not in this case very strange I guess I'll just do a little bit of uh, something to try and kill the enemy crossbowman. I've got to be careful here as well because, yeah, look at that. Iron Circle Centurions, everybody. Be careful of them. Be careful. If you're playing alongside me and Pendor right now, you probably don't want to fight anyone that has these in their army unless you are very confident that you have great, great units. And I'm, I was actually quite confident beforehand, but now I'm actually not. <laughs> 
Now I'm actually not so confident because I thought, hey, you know what? We're probably going to be okay, right? You know, we're probably going to be fine. But uh, no, now I'm thinking that, whoa, that was a nice hit right there from one of our Dashar Noble Cavalry. They actually saved me right there. I think I probably would have had major difficulties dealing with them. I think I should probably retreat. Oh no, never mind. We're actually doing much better than I than I thought. Okay, well maybe we can... Uh, I'm kind of thinking of retreating right now, literally just because I am so incredibly injured and I really do not want to get taken out. Ah, uh, you know, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just going to retreat. I'm just going to retreat. We're not going to lose any honor or anything like that for retreating in a field battle anyway, so I suppose it's absolutely fine. And uh, you can see here that we lost 100 units. And we outnumber them by such a dramatic margin. Look at look at how much we outnumber them by. We have 166 on the battlefield and they have 83. That is insane. The amount of damage that they're able to do against us. Wow. Yeah. And, and that's a testament. As I said, that's a testament to the Iron Circle Centurions. And uh, we didn't even see Agathon Legatus and his forces. I think... Is he the guy with the Iron Circle Centurions? I don't think so. Well, maybe, maybe if he is, well, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. It doesn't really matter who has it. It's just that they do, you know, they do have them. So we've got to be a bit careful. And I'm actually telling my people to hold position in the wrong place. Very good. All right, so what we're going to do is a similar situation once again. But this time around, I'm going to tell my cavalry to actually follow me a little bit closer. And uh, maybe we can make a good go of things. Bear in mind that we have insane amounts of cavalry. Look at this. Look at how much cavalry we have right here. And how many... Uh, we, we literally don't have any infantry, do we? We have, like, two? <laughs> it looks like that. It looks like that from, from my perspective down here. Yeah, we have quite a few. Fifteen? I don't know. That's it. We have, like, fifteen infantry at the front and we have many more archers which is good to see at the, at the very least but uh yeah we're gonna need to see what we can do about our cavalry maybe we can just take them around the side here Yo, look at this look at this these iron circle centurions by the way have absolutely amazing thrown weapon proficiency they're kind of like mm, they're kind of like shadow legion centurions in a way Shadow Legion are very, very good as well. And it really is a matter of just being very careful when you're fighting them because they can take you out from, from range. They can take you out up close. They're really, really powerful. So it's definitely a particular unit you've got to be really careful of. If you see Iron Circle Centurions, boom, you know, just be very cautious. If you're, if you're doing the Iron Man challenge, that is. If you're not, then you don't have to be and you can, you can die from them if you want. You know, it's not... A, not a big deal. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful that I haven't gotten killed by a thrown weapon yet. Because I think they're my bane. In, in offense, it, me using them and me being killed by them, I think they're probably my worst weapon. Even though I'm actually not doing too badly with thrown weapons in our Viking Conquest Iron Man challenge. Uh, I'm doing pretty well in that with thrown weapons. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's all right, you know. I think if you have a good amount of throwing proficiency and you find a good enough weapon, then I think you'll be okay. And we probably want to uh, do a little bit of something with our infantry right here. Probably want to get our infantry into a decent position here, change our archers' positioning as well. And we've literally not even lost that many units. So I think retreating at that particular point in the previous round was a perfect way to go. I think that was a perfect course of action to take, at least at the time. Because now we... Oh! Okay. Wow. Okay, I did not know that that was where they spawned in. Uh, I mean, I think that was 
pretty blatantly obvious that I didn't know that because otherwise I would not have gone closer, right? Yeah, you can see how that would turn out pretty badly. Wow. Kind of surprised. Kind of surprised. Okay, so yeah, let's tell my infantry to charge in. Tell my archers to charge in because they probably run out of arrows by now. And uh, some of them will probably be uh, itching to get into some battles. And I'm going to try and get on a horse. Hello, Imperial Silver... St oh, Imperial! Imperial Silver Stallion. That sounds really nice. Maybe I should have gotten this for uh, for my knights. This sounds, uh, or looks, actually pretty cool. I'm not entirely sure what its stats are like, though. It seems decent. Unfortunately, my Noldor horse is now crippled, so I will have to put it in my inventory to uh, get it restored. But there you go. That is indeed a victory for us. There is one more enemy to take care of, but wow. Whew, that 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 got me that got me really tense. That got me really tense right there. I really thought that was it. I really thought that was going to be my death. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. Twenty-two renown. We really didn't even lose that many units. Literally, the only drama that was in there was me almost dying. Ugh, okay. Now we can actually take him prisoner. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Now this is also one of the reasons why I wanted to get this guy to actually get into a, a battle with us because we can actually try to get him to join us. And I'm actually going to take him prisoner as a result. He's going to lose a little bit of relation, but we have persuaded people with lower relation to join us in the past. And I think this is a really good opportunity to do so. This guy also could join us, but he's pitiless. That is, that is the problem. He is pitiless. I don't really want to take a pitiless vassal if at all possible. So I'm going to just let him go and gain some honor as a result. There you go. All right. So now my spirit horse is lame, which I'm very much annoyed at, to be honest. But now I can just replace it with this one. <laughs> I have two. You know, I have two. So I can actually just use that. So that's pretty good. Otherwise, we'll just take a small amount. And uh, we, what? Do these actually become anything? They do. Uh, they become Pendor recruits and things like that. Okay. Well, I guess I will just take them for the sake of taking them. But uh, what do the militia recruits become? They become Pendor recruits as well. So I guess I will take them as well. Okay. And otherwise, we can just recruit all these. There we go. And there it is. Okay. So, yeah. Thankfully, my vassals actually did turn up to actually help me with this particular fight. Because I don't think I would have been able to do it by myself with my very severely depleted Iron Knights and Iron Sergeant values right there. Really, really bad. And uh, let's actually have a look here. So, here we go. Yes. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very happy about this. Very well, friend. I will accept your oath of fealty. And he does fail to bring over any centers to our faction. But personally, I don't really care. He's an upstanding vassal, basically one of the best you can get, and I'm really, really pleased about it. Wow, could not have could not have gone better, I think. Could not have gone better, but there you go. He, this is this is currently what is going on in the area. Not much, really, and uh, wow, the, the Fierce Veins seem to have quite a few uh, quite a few fiefs around here. Hmm, we have to keep a close eye on them because that might be a bit problematic. But, uh, yeah, anyway, that will be it. That will be it for this episode. And, uh, well, stay tuned, because we're going to be at war against two different factions from now on, unless the Singalians decide to make peace with us. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.